Welcome to the Fundamentals of Ultrasound Physics Lecture Series, put together by the Ohio State University College of Medicine. Today's special lecture is on blood flow hemodynamics. The outline of this, le of this lecture is as follows. This is actually a prelude to the Doppler lecture. We'll talk about steady flow, laminar versus turbulent flow, stenosis, and pulsatile flow. The pressure gradient is the driving force behind blood flow. It is measured in units of Pascal as a function of the change in pressure, P1 minus P2. Imagine you have a heart and your limbs. The vessel, simplistically, uh, is a distance L from the heart to the limbs with a vessel radius of R. The pressure is high in the heart and lower in the, ex in the extremities. This difference in the pressure is designated delta P, and this will drive the flow of blood from the heart towards the extremities, as indicated by a diagram in this slide. Bear in mind that the delta P is equivalent to the voltage in the electrical analogy. Briefly, the volume flow rate of blood is delta P, the gradient, divided by the resistance. This resistance denotes flow resistance, and for the time being we'll think of it as friction. Now let's talk about the resistance factor in the hemodynamic equation. Viscosity, nu, is a resistance to flow offered by fluid in motion measured in the units of poise. In, the, in water, that number is 10 to the minus 3. Blood is higher, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And oil, as you recall, is very thick and therefore its viscosity is much higher. Resistance is expressed in the equation as, as indicated in the slide. Now recall F of V, which is the flow rate of the volume is delta P over R. If you uh, put two and two together, the volume flow rate is equivalent to the delta P times a geometric factor divided by a, another geometric factor. Notice that resistance is proportional to the viscosity, whereas the volume flow rate is inversely proportional to the viscosity. Therefore, to summarize the key relationship for the steady flow hemodynamics, as viscosity nu increases, the resistance increases, and the volume flow rate decreases. This is all you need to know for the purposes of this lecture. And is uh, the volume flow rate equation is known also known as a Porcel equation. Bear in mind that the volume flow rate could be influenced by other dynamic parameters, such as inspiration, which increases the pressure gradient in the venous system relative to the thorax, thereby increasing the cardiac output and the flow rate. Physical exertion increases the pressure gradient as well. Let's talk about the continuity equation. F of V equals A1 times V1 equals A2 times V2. This tells you that the product of the flow velocity across a particular cross-section area is constant if you compare one region to another. There is no gain or loss of fluid. This is a venous uh, duplex uh, Doppler diagram uh, across the liver where the portal vein is uh, having the gate of the Doppler signal being measured and you'll know that the venous blood flow has a flat uh, pattern as opposed to the triphasic pattern that you'll see later on in this lecture for arteries. If we look at a schematic of a uh, vessel lumen with a thrombus in the middle of the, of the vessel and area A1 is proximal to this thrombus, applying the continuity equation we know that as the blood flows across the stenosis that the velocity must be increased because of the decreased cross-sectional area across the thrombus. Specifically, the area over the thrombus is A2. If we look at the equation uh, above, we know that as the area is decreased, as an example, by 50%, in order to maintain constant flow, the velocity V2 is going to be increased by a factor of 2. V2 equals A1 over v A2 times V2. The distribution of blood flow velocities, furthermore, is widened beyond the stenotic region compared to before it. As you learn in the next lecture on Doppler flow, it is actually more convenient to express flow in terms of velocity rather than volume. Therefore, by rearranging the equation that we learned previously, the velocity of blood flow V is actually equal to delta P times R squared, the radius of the lumen squared, divided by 8 times L times the viscosity. Since the Doppler shift F of D, as you learn in the next lecture, is proportional to velocity, in turn, the Doppler frequency is proportional to R squared as well. 
Let's do a question. An atherosclerotic lesion reduces the lumen diameter to one quarter of its normal size. What must be the increase in flow velocity beyond the stenosis? Is the answer A, double? Is the answer B, quadruple? Is the answer C, increased by a factor of 8x? Or D, increased by a factor of 16x? You may pause this video to consider your response. The answer is B, quadruple, as you tell uh, from the continuity equation. Let's talk about post blood flow or arterial flow. In comparison to venous or steady state flow, it is a little more complicated. In addition to considering friction or resistance, you also have to talk about inertia, which is blood mass, as well as elasticity of the vessel wall, namely capacitance or compliance. The key characteristic of post blood flow is triphasic flow. In phase one, you have expansion of the non-rigid vessel wall during systole, pushing blood forward, followed by phase two, which is during di early diastole when the vessel contract with the extra volume of blood, it gives rise to flow reversal, otherwise known as the Winkessel effect. At the very end, at diastole, you have a little bit of forward, forward flow in the Doppler signal. Here is an example of the brachial artery Doppler diagram where the gate is right in the middle of the brachial artery and you have phase one, which is the large forward flow due to the expansion of flow forward, followed by a flow reversal in phase two during early diastole. And finally, phase three, you have a little bit of forward flow because the aortic valve has closed, causing blood to move forward towards the end of this phase. When we talk about stenosis, we usually talk about the presence of atherosclerotic plaques causing narrowing of the lumen, thereby obstructing blood flow. Not surprisingly, stenosis gives rise to turbulent flow. This turbulent flow gives, gives different Doppler characteristics. They have distinct character prior to, at, and distal to stenosis. And we'll expand on that in our Doppler lecture. Now to whet your appetite a little bit, uh, we will talk about laminar flow versus turbulent flow. Laminar flow is when you have no obstruction and your vessels are relatively patent and wide, where you have a blood uh, cell velocity being higher in the middle of the vessel compared to the edge. Now in turbulent flow, because of the presence of stenosis, the velocity distribution is much wider and the characteristics are much more different. Let's talk about turbulent flow. In addition to viscosity, density needs to be considered in determining turbulence. Density is defined as mass per volume, grams over milliliters. Now the Reynolds numbers is used to distinguish whether you're in turbulent flow or laminar flow. The normal numbers RE equals velocity times the diameter uh, times the density divided by the viscosity. So the diameter is 2 times the radius. Now, it's important to know that Reynolds number is unitless. If it's greater than 2,200, beyond that number, you're in the turbulent range. Uh, it usually occurs immediately distal to the stenosis. Here again, you have the contrast of the laminar flow, where the velocity distribution is relatively con constant and small, versus turbulent flow where the flow distribution is much higher, and greater than 2,000. Let's do a question. Which of the following parameters, if increased, could move blood flow towards the turbulent regime? Is it A, decreased vessel diameter, B, decreased fluid density, C, decreased blood vessel viscosity, or D, Reynolds number less than 1,000? You may pause to consider your response. The correct answer is C, decreased blood viscosity. We're going to summarize what we learned today about the hemodynamics of steady flow. What increases flow velocity V through the blood vessel? As the pressure gradient delta P increases, or the cardiac output increases, the velocity increases. Or as the friction or resistance decreases due to the increase in vessel diameter, decreased length, or the decreased viscosity. The most important point here is that Doppler frequency is proportional to velocity. What increases the Reynolds number, RE, that is used to determine turbulence flow? As the velocity of the blood cells increase, or as the diameter of the vessel increases, the real numbers increase. In addition, as the viscosity decreases, or the density of the blood increases, the Reynolds number uh, will increase as well. So in somebody who is anemic, uh, due to leading to lower viscosity, the Reynolds number will increase. In terms of post blood flow, we're talking about the arterial flow, which is determined by a complex interaction of the impedance, namely resistance or inertia, with the compliance, which is expansion and contraction of the vessel walls in determining the triphasic flow. 
During flow reversal, during uh, early diastole, you have expansion of, of the blood vessel giving way to contraction or the Wynn-Kessel effect. Now the trivessel, a trivasic characteristic on special Doppler uh, have been demonstrated in this lecture uh, to further weight your appetite for the Doppler lecture. This is the end of the lecture on hemodynamics. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.